As you're going to find, there are lots of different ways to deal with templates. So the way that I've outlined so far in this course is to use these embedded scripts. But there's certainly a downside to that. Now we're embedding all of this within our HTML. We're having to fetch it from the DOM using jQuery. Uh, that's not 100% ideal. But then again, it's also not ideal to put all of your templates in line in your code. I would only do that if I'm working with a very small template. So you end up with this sort of situation where you're not exactly sure, do I inline these so it's a little bit quicker, but now my code is uglier? Do I place them within my index.html file? Do I export these out to its own template file? In that way, you could have templates.js. It could have its own namespace. That's certainly a way to consider. We're not quite to that point yet, but I do want to make it a little bit easier to fetch our templates from the page. And to do that, let's create a helper function to begin. And then we'll slowly improve that as we continue this course. So I'm going to go to the top of the page, and we're going to create a template function. And this actually would be a global. As a rule of thumb, you want to limit your globals to around one or two, or what you can do is wrap everything within a self-invoking anonymous function. And that's probably what I would do. But for now, we want to easily switch between Chrome Dev Tools. Let's stick with this just for a little bit longer. So what our template wants to do is it's going to accept the ID of the template that we want to fetch. And then it's simply going to return that item being fetched with jQuery. And we're going to return its HTML. So let's take that and for now, see how we can implement that into our project. Well, now anywhere we reference a template like this, we can instead do something like this. Template, person, template. And now when we call that function, we're gonna pass in template and it's going to fetch the element with an ID of person template and grab its HTML. So we should have the exact same effect. Let's make sure. I reload the page and sure enough, it's still working like we're used to. Now, another thing you might want to do is go ahead and compile that. Now, whether or not you do this depends on your project. So I might be inclined to stick with this. But if you want to go ahead and automatically compile it, you could say underscore dot template and you can pass that through. Now you can come back and your templates will be a lot cleaner if you do that. So then at this point, you would get rid of all of that. I come back, reload the page, and now we're getting the exact same thing. And then this makes it, I would say, considerably easier to create new scripts. So let's say you have another one. We'll paste it in, and we'll just say, dude, template. We're not going to change anything. This is just for now. But then when you come back, and let's say, I don't know. Let's say you have a var dude view equals backbone dot view dot extend. Then... Maybe rather than using a tag name, if you're using a template, you could just say template equals template dude template, and you're done. You don't have to remember to go underscore dot template and then find the element from the DOM and then fetch its HTML. You simply rely on a single template helper method. I'm going to delete all of this, though, because we're not dealing with any dudes in this lesson. In the next video, I want to talk about namespacing.